Hey everyone, Rob Allen with Stromquist and Company. Hope that you're all doing well. Tried to uh, kind of innovate and think of some really neat ways to get a lot of information um, out to all of my good customers. And so Michael Bonner, uh, Stephen Smitherman, and Timothy Bonner, and I all kind of got into a room and came out with uh, Tuesday Talk, which we think is a, uh, a really neat thing to uh, get going for you guys, and, and hopefully you like it. Um, so what we're going to do is every Tuesday, um, we're going to pop one of these out. When I say we, it really means I. Um, but with the collaboration of the rest of the team. Um, so kind of what you can expect is um, we're going to do a product spotlight. So each week we're going to kind of take a new product, uh, show you how it works, show you what it is, show you how you could use it, and then um, you guys will have the opportunity to contact me if you'd like to put together a live demo. The rest of the week I'll come out and, uh, and get you squared away and, and show you all the good stuff if we need to bring Michael or Steven um, we can definitely do that as well. Um, if enough of you think that a product is really neat and new, um, we'll schedule either a, a live webinar or an in-person demo um, at Stromquist or something like that. So um, kind of some neat stuff. You know, I've found that in the past when, when we have new product, um, sometimes it takes me six weeks to get out and see all of you guys. Um, by then, you've either heard about it, kind of made your own uh, opinions and all that kind of good stuff. And so this is kind of a new, fresh way to get it out to you. Let you see what it is, at least it's in the back of your mind, and then if you find like it's something that you could work for you later, um, then you know, we'll definitely come out and show it to you. Um, from there, we're going to do a tech minute each week. So Michael and or Steven um, are going to put together something that's going to really be kind of cool for you technical guys out there. It may be some programming stuff, it may be um, a tip and trick on, on you know, how to do an install a little bit better way. Um, they're going to post it. Um, I'm going to tell you about it, and then if you need uh, further clarification, we can definitely get that for you. Um, many of you may know I actually do a video cast um, on YouTube um, periodically called 7 Minutes of Control. So um, this kind of came sort of kind of the same way with this. I wanted to innovate and want to do some things different. And so no one really wants to sit down, you know, for longer than 7, 10, 15 minutes at a time. Now you're going to find that these... Tuesday talks are probably going to last a little bit longer than that, um, but the seven minutes of control, um, it may be a, a full product demo, it may be an interview of, with somebody, it may be a thought process on a new industry train or something like that, but I've put the th these things together, I think I've got 12 or 13 of them now um, on YouTube, so each week um, I'm going to take an excerpt from one of my favorite ones and show you a little tidbit of it and then show you where you can go and actually see the whole thing. Um, Control Talk Now is actually something that Eric Stromquist and Ken Smyers do weekly. Um, usually runs for about an hour to an hour and a half, and they cover all the industry trends, all the different topics, news, um, all that stuff. And so I'm going to take a, a tidbit from their show and kind of put that out there for you to uh, consume as well. And then again, if you want to go and see a little bit more, you definitely can. Um, not every week, but I am going to try and put together a sales tip. It may be um, how to overcome objection. It may be um, how to use an iPad for a presentation. Uh, it may be a, a lot of different kind of neat little things that you can do as far as follow-up and that type of stuff. Um, don't claim to be a sales genius, but um, I, I have ripped off a uh, sales genius from time to time, and so I, uh, I may do that. may use something that, uh, that's worked for me in the past. Share it with you guys. Let me know how you think about it and what you like about it. Also going to give calendar of events. So each week I'm going to update the calendar. It may be the same thing for three or four weeks. Um, it may be a little bit something different. But each week I'm going to show you what's on the calendar as far as training or um, webinars that we have or any, any kind of thing like that. I'm going to put it on the calendar so you guys will know about it. Get in the habit of looking at these um, every Tuesday morning and uh, we'll get you all set. Of course, from time to time I'm going to have special guests. So we may bring on some manufacturer reps. We may bring on some um, folks that um, are industry minds that, you know, maybe are teachers um, that know energy efficiency and that type of stuff, something that we could kind of capitalize on. So I'll bring those guys on from time to time and uh, share those with you. And then, of course, we're going to do industry trends and then business tips. Um, so basically industry trends, that's pretty self-explanatory. Business tips kind of go along with the sales tip. Um, it may be how to organize your outlook inbox. Something like that, just some kind of neat life hacks, if you will, on uh, what what you could do out there to make your life easier. And uh, hopefully, you guys will start sharing yours with me as well, and then I can share them with everybody. So, jumping right on in, we're going to go ahead and go live with this one now. I expect that this is going to evolve quite a bit and very rapidly. Um, 
oftentimes I defeat myself before I even get going because I have this great awesome idea and I want it to be perfect right from the get go and I end up determining that it's not going to be perfect so I just don't do it so uh, we had this idea about a week ago I'm throwing it out there it's very raw um, we're going to get them better more organized as we go figure out what works what doesn't what topics that you want to see what you don't want to see um, and the format that you like it in and then we're going to kind of uh, take it from there um, so here goes week number one of Tuesday talk so you'll be happy to know that we're always innovating here at Stromquist and Company especially in our BAS department so we've created a resource site and you can go to bas.stromquist.com to view that and as you log in you're going to have to request permission once you register for the site and we're going to give you access to the site for what you're currently signed up for so if you're a Honeywell uh, contractor but not a Johnson contractor you only see the Honeywell stuff uh, vice versa if you're signed up for both and of course you'll see both of those um, and we're going to post a lot of different stuff um, you'll be able to get to my seven minutes of control you'll be able to see some stuff on control trends um, and that's also going to be a work in progress too um, these Tuesday talks are actually going to be a part of the BAS resource site so from after this week one to be able to see these you're going to have to actually register for the BAS resource site to be able to view them um, but with that we're actually going to make links and that kind of stuff so I'll show you the 10 or 12 things that we're going to talk about uh, in that particular episode and you'll be able to either watch them all from start to finish or if you say hey I, you know number two and number seven don't really apply to me so I'm going to watch the rest of them and skip those you'll be able to click on the various links to be able to check those out and view those uh, all right so uh, make sure you get on that site if you have any issues just email myself or Michael Bonner um, and we'll get you all set up or Timothy Bonner um, all right so let's go ahead and jump into this week's product spotlight so J2 Innovations has come out with Finstack 3.0 this is about the neatest thing out there right now um, some people say that it may be something that could replace a Jace I think that you're gonna find applications that a Jace is gonna work really good and then this is gonna work really good what I'm going to show you today is actually a quick little excerpt from a, a video that they have online of their Finstack 3.0 mobile. Um, that's kind of the hot industry trend these days is that everyone's kind of creating these graphics, um, but getting them to a mobile interface of some sort is becoming tricky and it's not something that everybody knows how to do. J2 Innovations has made it super easy. All you do is download the app and it works with your existing programming and your existing graphics. Um, so check out this quick little uh, excerpt from their video and then um, tell me what you think. If you would like to get a in live person or live in person demo, uh, shoot me an email, rob at I'll make sure we get that squared away. If enough of you ask for it, maybe we'll do a webinar or we'll maybe get Scott Munch uh, down here from J2 Innovations to actually do a, a live class for us. Um, you do have to sign up to be a, a Finstack dealer, a J2 Innovations dealer. Um, so I'll need to get you info on that, but this is pretty much the neatest stuff that's out there.
Cool. So that was a quick little uh, video. Like I said, if you liked that, um, shoot me an email, rob at strongquist.com if you need further info. And we'll either get a uh, live demo or get Scott Minch down here from uh, J2 to, to go over that with us live in person. All right. This week's Tech Minute. So Michael is going to, Michael and Stephen are going to post um, to the BAS resource site um, tips and tricks. So they're going to be everything from small little tidbits to, like I said, installation and all that kind of good stuff. I think um, with BAS resource site being open about a week now, we've got three of them up there. I think that you're going to see fast and furious these things going up. So we'll probably have a dozen before you know it and then probably trickle down from there because right now we've got a bunch of them. We just have to get them loaded. Uh, this particular one is uh, kind of neat. Um, I obviously am not a programmer, uh, but Michael uh, showed me this uh, this little trick and uh, I think it's going to work out pretty cool. So it's the point status and status demux. So what do all the colors mean? Well, when you pull up your wire sheet, you're going to see that your various points have different colors and those just indicate a particular status, whether it's overridden, whether it's uh, you know an occupied, unoccupied, all that kind of good stuff. You'll actually have a color so you can go through and see um, visually without having to look very hard exactly what state or status that that uh, particular point is in. Well, what you may not know is that what you can do with that information. So you can actually take that particular point that's in that particular status and when it enters that status, you can have a program written that's going to actually go and carry out a certain action. So let's say that you have a status of um, overridden that uh, maybe an alarm triggers this, this point to be overridden and you therefore want that to go ahead and shut the pump off. Well, you can do that because you write to it, says, hey, if this ever becomes into override mode, then do this status demux and it'll go through and actually write the code for you to go ahead and turn that pump off. Um, this is listed, like I said, on the BAS resource site, um, a step-by-step uh, process of how to go and do that. So check that out, especially if you're a guy that's uh, in Workbench all day long. Um, I think you're going to find there's a lot of things on there that are going to save you a whole heck of a lot of time. All right, seven minutes in control. Like I said, this is sort of kind of my baby, um, something that I've sort of kind of done. Um, based on Eric twisting my arm for a really, really long time, he's been doing the control trend stuff for a really, really long time. I sort of kind of resisted that. That was sort of his thing. Uh, and he finally just sort of basically told me that that's what I was going to do. So I came up with my own show. I wanted it to be brief because I wanted to get to the point and, uh, and, and just get the facts out there. And so this seven minutes of control is actually pretty neat for you Honeywell contractors that are also set up to do security. There's actually a really neat thing regarding the new uh, security J the 616 and the web 600 E. So I'm going to let you watch this quick little video, a um, little excerpt. And then of course you can go to um, the YouTube page, Eric Stromquist. You can find it on control trends and you can also find it on our BAS resource sites. So we've got multiple places where this video, um, lays and you can go check it out. So check out this video and then we'll talk more about it just in a minute. Niagara solution out there right now. Um, huge, huge, huge. All right, so let's look because obviously with all this extra stuff, it's going to be a little bit more money, right? Not so fast, my friend, as Lee Corso would say. Basically, if you add everything up, you're going to pay about $3,462 for that Web 600. And that security Jace that we just talked about is actually... 2911 so that's a savings about five hundred and fifty one dollars and you're gonna get the embedded workbench and you're gonna get the upgraded memory and you're gonna get two door readers and you're gonna save your customer five hundred and fifty one dollars how in the heck is that even possible well, we don't know either but those brilliant minds over at Honeywell said we've got to get the security product out there we've got to make something make sense to our contractors of how they can hop into security and they can be successful and I think that they've definitely, and I think you would agree, have accomplished that today. How could you not? If you don't start doing this, then every single time that you go out and you install a Web 600, you're basically just going to charge your customers $551 extra, and they're not going to get the benefit of door readers and that type of stuff. All right, so as you can see, you can save a lot of money. Now, uh, one little clarification, um, you are limited to 60 devices on that security JACE. So if you're going to be over that, um, you need to look at what you want to do, whether you want to have an extra JACE or whether it just does make sense on this particular application to do the Web 600E. But with this, you're actually going to have um, a JACE 
for all intents and purposes, that's exactly like your Web 600. And it's got all those extra things, the embedded workbench, the expanded memory, but you also get those two door readers or, or two uh, door contacts. So, um, I'm sorry, not door contacts. You get the two readers um, in the J's. All of the door hardware you are going to buy separately, but you don't have to do that. It's scalable. So, I think the way you would tell your customer and the way you would sell this is that, listen, you know, Contractor A is going to go and install this JSON to your system. That's great and wonderful. Um, but I can actually, for the same price, uh, give you the scalability that if you wish down the road, we can access control two doors in your building for you. Um, or we can actually go ahead and do that right now for next to nothing. So this is perfect for that small um, office building. It doesn't really have to be small, but let's just say it's just got a main door in the front and maybe a, a door someplace else that you want to access control. Um, that chase is actually um, $551 and, and um, less than the, than the typical Web 600E. And that's, a, that's probably about enough, depending on your door, to go ahead and buy that door hardware and still get in there at the same price. And, of course, you got to add your labor and all that kind of good stuff. But hope you enjoyed that. I think I've got 12, 13, 14 episodes of 7 Minutes of Control, so make sure you check those out on the BAS resource site, um, on Control Trends, and also on the YouTube channel, Eric Stromquist. All right, next up, Control Talk Now. So this is kind of where all of this came from. This is um, Eric Stromquist and Ken Smyers, who do a weekly show uh, and post it on YouTube and, and Vimeo. Um, it usually goes for about an hour to hour and a half, and it's several topics. It's super neat. It's something that you definitely want uh, to go check out. Um, I learn a lot from listening to it, and I'm going to tell you my favorite way to listen to it here in just a little bit. But check this out. They talk about um, Paul Oswald and uh, caught up with him at the uh, Realcom Obicon conference. And um, this guy is a true innovator. And his thing right now is how the industry um, needs to really um, go after young people and how to get young people trained and how training isn't enough. Learning is what is important. You can't just check that box and say, yeah, we trained them. Now they know what they're doing. Um, you know, us young guys and, and those younger than me even that are entering the workforce, um, you know, things are different. We don't have that understanding or the skill set or even the want to really to do some of the stuff that some of the older generations have done. So we're more innovators. We have to learn differently and do a lot of different stuff. And so I've really paid a lot of attention to what Paul's been saying lately. And this is a cool little interview that uh, Eric and Ken do for him or actually talk about an interview that they did with him. So enjoy that and I'll be right back. There, Paul Oswald was one of the speakers, Kenny. As you and I both know, Paul is uh, just not only a fantastic integrator, his company just got, by, got, got bought by C.B. Richard Ellis, but he, he is just one of the great, great thinkers in our industry. And Kenny, it was interesting. Two, two takeaways from Paul's talk that I, that I think are worth mentioning and remembering and acting upon. For our listeners who know, Kenny and I talk about Paul a lot, and he talks about the tribal knowledge leaving the building. Well, what he talked about in his talk was the difference between training and learning. It's a huge distinction. He says sending, sending some of these young people to a training class doesn't get it. So you can be trained on somebody that doesn't mean you learn it. So learning for him is, is, is almost like a mentoring is, is, is a part of it. But uh, somebody takes one of the younger people uh, under their wings and, and has them learn versus being just trained. The second big piece, Kenny, that he talked about was uh, communicating with your customer, uh, the customer interface. And it was kind of fascinating because uh, 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 Paul was advocating again that, that most of us as engineers typically get down to you know how something works. And he says the big question you have to ask is why. Why do they want to do it? He gave an example of a customer that he had that uh, they called up and wanted analytics. They wanted analytics. And, and I guess Paul's engineer sort of got him going a little bit. When Paul got on the scene, the first question he said was, well, why do you want analytics? And the customer. Cool. So pretty neat. So, you know, that's, uh, that's just a little excerpt from that particular uh, uh, control talk now that they did that. He posts those every Monday, um, usually every Monday, probably. 47, 48 Mondays out of the year, um, there's a vacation or something like that that prohibits them from doing them every single Monday. Um, but really cool. I think you'll find a lot of information there. 
and uh, Paul Oswald. He's really cool. You can find him out on LinkedIn, and Eric and Ken talk about him a lot on Control Trends, so make sure you check that out. All right, calendar of events. So for you J2, or I'm sorry, for you Johnson Controls guys, um, we've got the N2 modernization coming up on June 23rd. So Johnson Controls just came out with their PC controllers uh, with the N2 embedded in them. And so this is pretty neat. You can take a, um, a PC controller, the PCVs, PCGs, and PCAs, and they can be N2 or BACnet um, with just the firmware reflash. So what you'll see a lot of times if you go into a building with N2 in it, you can go ahead and, and install a new controller and, and just leave it in 2 and then over the next few years as those um, existing original N2 controllers go bad, replace them with new controllers once you've got them all uh, replaced and you just you know, do the firmware uh, flash to all of those controllers and now they're all backnet. Um, just a new, easier way to do things. Um, they've actually now just come out with a DX9100 replacement and a VMA replacement. And so we've got a four-hour class for you on the 23rd. It's going to come out and show you how to program these things, show you what good applications they're good for and what they're not, uh, when you should go ahead and rip out the N2 and put back net in, when you should run a shadow bus, and when you should do the example that I gave you before. So definitely want to uh, check that out if you're a Johnson Controls contractor on June 23rd. All right, in late July... We're going to call it Contractor Day from now because that's what I called it last time. Um, but I've got a pretty neat lineup. So I just came back for the Realcom IBICON conference. I went out there with Eric. It was in San Antonio. Um, it was uh, late last week or actually the early part of last week. And um, I tell you, it's pretty much the best conference that I've been to um, in regards to the wealth of information that I received and how I could come back and apply that to what I've done. Um, Realcom Omicom was two separate conferences. They decided just to go ahead and join up as one. And it's basically where all the property managers, building owners, um, facility managers go uh, once a year to learn all the new uh, industry trends for real estate and large commercial buildings. This year's main topics were cybersecurity, uh, data analytics, and big data. So we've heard big data a bajillion times. Um, almost at the point where people are trying to, to come up with different uh, ways to say big data and now I think that they're saying usable data um, or the right data and um, it's, it's kind of neat the way that all this kind of came through and, and so with that I knew that we had you know some cybersecurity things out there that were um, a little concerning and then I knew that this big data kind of buzz was going on well it hit really hard and really fast this year and I know that the folks that went and attended that are going to come back and talk to their folks that are doing their service and, and they're going to go ask for money and get it written into the budget where they need to tighten up on their cybersecurity and they also need to um, get that data out of their equipment and out of their buildings and out of the various things that they need to look at and automate a lot of this stuff. And so they've been trained on it. They know about it. Um, all of the big wigs were there and everybody was soaking this stuff up and everybody was talking about it. So... For this year's contractor day, or to be determined what the new name of it's going to be, um, I've got CyberPro coming. Um, they're from LinkSpring, and so um, their cybersecurity package is going to go through and show you what it is, um, how you can use it, so that you, when you get that opportunity with your customer, um, you can know what you're talking about, and then you can also go out and start selling this stuff, um, because if, if you don't, somebody else is, and you guys need to be ready to do that. Sky Foundry, so Sky Sparks um, is, the, is the big... Uh, data thing in the data analytics software package so this is an overlay over top of your JSON and, and your front end of whatever that is um, it goes through and it logs events so it'll tell you if you have faults so if you have if you're satisfied at 72 degrees and that's your set point that's great but if you've got you know two different systems and heating and cooling fighting each other running up energy you don't know that that's necessarily happening that's one of the things that SkySpark can do for you um, on top of that give you all the data that you need um, it's really good stuff. KMC is going to be here. KMC just, just came out with a lot of new uh, stuff, a lot of new controllers. Um, everything down from the light commercial on up into they offer a Jace now. Um, a lot of good stuff. And so I think it's really good because that can appeal to a lot of different people. Um, it's not something that you have to sign up for to be able to, to go out and be an integrator with it. With the exception of the Jace, you do have to sign up for that. Um, but everything else, you can go ahead and buy off the shelf. And so I think that you're going to find that's going to fit a lot of different applications. So it was important for those guys to come out here, and I, and I thought that it would be good for the, them to be here. 
intelligentbuildings.com. I, I met these guys, Eric's on them for quite a while, but I met these guys out at Realcom and actually sat through a five hour boot camp on what an intelligent building is, uh, why you need an intelligent building. I was absolutely blown away. Um, I made three or four pages of notes um, that I'm still trying to consume. And these guys um, have basically gone out there. They're, they work as sort of kind of consultants um, out in the space. And so they're going to work with your customers on a much higher level um, and talk about all this stuff, big data, um, you know, uh, cybersecurity, all that kind of good stuff. And they're going to come be a part of this contractor day and give you guys a one hour crash course on what our mutual customers are going after um, what it is to me an intelligent building and arm you all so this is like a salesperson oh my gosh if you're in sales you want to be here to check this out because this is going to arm you with so much stuff to be able to go out and talk to your customers about and be able to go out and sell a lot of stuff that these guys need There's nothing worse than going out and selling something they don't need it's so easy to go out and sell them something that they do need and these guys are going to teach you all about that um, Finally, Ed Merwin with Tritium is going to be here to talk about Niagara 4 um, and what you can expect with that. And, and uh, if, you, if you know Ed, he's always a good time. Um, he's been in the industry for, I think, I think 35 or 40 years. Um, but he, he knows his stuff and uh, always a treat. Lastly, um, August 3rd through 7th is Niagara certification here in Stromquist, Atlanta. Um, I said Niagara certification on purpose because I don't know if we're going to do Niagara 4 or our very last AX, I'm leaning towards Niagara 4. Um, so maybe something that a lot of you AX guys want to go ahead and hop in and get done so that you can be ready when the when the release comes in, I think quarter three, maybe quarter four um, of 2015. So really cool stuff. That's what's on the calendar. All right, lastly, we're going to do a biz tip this week and podcast. So I told you how I like to listen to Control Talk now, and it's via podcast. Now, I'm in the car a lot. Um, I've got satellite radio. I've got um, all the local sports talk and news talk and all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, I've got music and whatever. But I found that podcasts are actually pretty darn neat. So I've got Bluetooth um, on my phone and Bluetooth in my car. Um, that helps. So you can basically just pick your phone up, turn your podcast on, push it through your Bluetooth, and you're good to go. If you don't have that, of course, you can do the headphones. Um, you can listen to it at work. Um, all that kind of good stuff, but I love listening to it in the car. So I get the content that I like, and I make myself a, a, a list of 10 or 12 different podcasts that make sense for me. And then um, they update, you know, some of them are once a week, some of them are several times per day. Um, and then you can even make playlists of your episodes. And so I can hop in the car, and I know that I got to drive down to Florida. I'm going to be in the car for five hours. I can make five hours of podcast. And listen to all the stuff that I want. So you kind of think about your DVR at home for your television, and you get to watch what you want when you want to watch it. Well, this is you get to listen to what you want when you want to listen to it. Nothing's worse than when you go on the radio and they're just talking about something that you could really care less about or you couldn't care less about. Um, in the uh, this is kind of neat. So the app that I use is iTunes um, app, and so that's on the iPhone. Um, there's some other ones out there called Eye Catcher. It's letter I C A T H E R. Um, that's a pretty good one as well too. Um, and I think there's a couple of other ones. But if you just go into either your um, your Android App Store or the Apple App Store and just search for podcast, you'll be able to download an app. And then you go into search or discover, and uh, you'll be able to to pull up some and then start creating your list. So I highly recommend that. I really like it. Um, if you have any questions, you want to know what I listen to, or you need some recommendations, give me a shout and I'll certainly be able to help you. All right, that ends it. This is the inaugural Tuesday talk. Please, please shoot me an email. Let me know if this was awesome, if it was terrible, if it was a little bit in between, what you would tweak, what you like, what you don't like. Um, tell us what your, your comments on the BAS resource site and, uh, we'll go from there. So we're going to keep throwing this stuff out until you guys say, please, God, would you stop? Which I don't foresee that happening. Um, but pretty much every Tuesday, look for this and, uh, we appreciate it. Have a good one. Rob Allen, Stromquist. Take care.